RPV TV presents Studio RPV, the Peninsula's local news show with co-hosts Maria Soreo and Liz Brown Swanson. Welcome to Studio RPV. I'm Maria Soreo. And I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Happy summertime. Liz, it's June. It's time for summertime, right? We're ready. We're ready um, to we go. We are ready to go. And there's really so much going on here in the city and so much to talk about. But when you start, how was your weekend? I had a great weekend, other than I sprained my ankle about That's a week, not a week fun. ago at a graduation event. And uh, I've been hobbling, but doing better. and. Uh, and so just trying to mend there. And I also have, um, on Sunday, got to go to church. I've been, I used to go to the Wayfarers, and right. we all know what's going on with the chapel, yes. which we're all so sad and heartbroken over the fact that the chapel is getting disassembled. But, so where are you going to church so now we go to that Saint, one? Yeah, so they are now having services for the community at St. Francis in Palos Verdes Estates. They've donated the space. That's the nice. Church is, now we're having Sunday services there. So the congregation, the other wayfarers are going there right now. So it always makes me feel good. And we're all just hoping together to see that eventually that chapel will, even though it's coming down, it's gonna be, um, we'll see it one day come back up. Well, so it's coming down and they're trying to save the pieces. Is that right? Right. So be that they can rebuild them? Because of the land movement that right. has been accelerated, you know, around our entire peninsula. And of course, we're in a state of emergency right now that yes. continues in our own city. Um, because of the way the accelerated movement was impacting um, the chapel, um, they had they have they realized in order to save this, it's a historic landmark. Right. Of course, we know you know it was built by uh, Lloyd Wright, Frank Lloyd mm -hmm. Wright's son, to be a basically it's a national monument to Emanuel Swedenborg, who's yes. the founder of the Swedenborgian Ministry there. Mm -hmm. So all of this that it is on the National Registry of Historic Places in order to save it and preserve it, it needs to be taken down because right. you know, the, as there were window, the glass has been coming out, there's cracks in the foundation, and um, it's, it's just really sad it, to it, see all of what's going on there. And anybody that's ever been up there, the trees, the way that the church was nestled in the trees, that is going to be lost, which I is know. sad to me but because it was it's such a special environment, not just the chapel, but the environment around. But you know what? If they can find a way to put that back up somewhere, it will still be so beautiful, and people will really, you know, they're going to miss it. Yeah, the chapel I'm sure opened you do. 73 years ago on Mother's Day in 1951, so with the timing of it. And um, the chapel, um, the executive director there, Dan Burchette, who's been out a lot, he's out speaking about what's mm -hmm. going on, yep. and um, has said, you know, Yes, we're watching the chapel's death, so to speak, but if from a Christian point of view, you're gonna see it rise again. That's right, And so Absolutely. that's what, you know, we have to look at it like that, and uh, it's had its time, and we're so thankful, because all the celebrations, we've all enjoyed as a community. You know, people Absolutely. know of it as weddings, but also, you know, whether there's just been so many events. They used to, I used to work there for a few years. I was years. gonna say, fun fact, Liz I, used to work at the chapel. I did, I spent two years there helping <laughs> them with community events. Yes. They had concerts and art shows, and really brought the community together, because the chapel didn't actually have, it doesn't have a membership. It's for the Wayfarer. Right. That's how it was designed. So mm -hmm. anybody, and people of all faiths do go there um, as well, which was really a, a wonderful part of the chapel. And it is, like you mentioned, the trees, such a Beautiful. spiritual place and known really when it was first built as the tree chapel mm -hmm. or the glass chapel. Yes. Um, it's always going to, um, we're all going to, we're all there for the community. And you go on wayfareschapel.org, by the way. And um, if See you what's want to going donate, um, you know, it's going to be millions of dollars for them. Yes, to, have to rebuild that and put yeah. that somewhere else. And I also want to add that um, our city, um, our mayor of our city, Mayor John mm -hmm. Cruikshank, our city manager, were all recently at the chapel when they made the announcement that the city, you know, if they're all working together to yes. help save the chapel, possibly as they're taking it down, store it and maybe on city property. That's mm -hmm. all to be determined. But so there's a lot of things in, in the mix. But and the, I, our city has been really supportive um, as the leadership mm -hmm. coming together behind the chapel because we want to keep Wayfarers Chapel in Rancho Palos Verdes. We want it to be rebuilt here and um, because it is such a gem for the community. And there was a rumor that maybe on the same grounds as the lighthouse, which I think would be fantastic. Yeah, you that. I would love that because I know. the lighthouse is such a a huge landmark and it would right. be cool if the chapel was there as well. And I think too, like, of, you never of know. course, the, it would be amazing if it could be rebuilt on the grounds, but if you yeah. see the instability that's been happening yes. over on their property, um, they had already, the city did have to red tag the administrative building on site and um, there's just so much upheaval. You just look mm. up, if you just drive, PV drive south and that's a whole other topic, Maria. We can, yeah. we we can, can do a whole show just on that. Show. 
So I want to talk about something else I've been watching. Okay, tell for me. Our city, our city's leadership academy. Yes, that has so, been gotten a lot of attention. Yes, the leadership mm -hmm. academy has been going on for 14 years in our city. Yeah. And um, the whole purpose of was to get people excited to learn about government for one. Right. And to learn about what happens at City Hall mm -hmm. and also to participate as a volunteer because we have teams of our teams of committee and commissions. Um, that people all volunteer, they're all volunteers, mm -hmm. and they certainly play a big role in helping our city with policy and help the council, city council do their work to make our community what and it is. How are people selected for that? Tell so us more they, about that. Well, the people, so for the, well, for the leadership academy, they they do they do. I don't want to say sell out because it's free, right? But there's only so many seats, so they had a full house. I think it was 25 participants. In they this have to last apply year. though, is that right? Yeah, you fill out that you mm -hmm. want to do this, and it's just first come, first serve, basically. Okay. And you actually can be as young as 14 years old. I was surprised to learn that you don't have to be, uh, you, have, you, can, be, you can be a minor. Wow. And because you want to encourage future leaders. So um, they've really changed this program over the years to really, they bring members from each department of the city. Um, we had our RPV TV cameraman who's here now, Jeff Coven. He, mm -hmm. he went and filmed all of them. So the meetings. Yes. That, that, the, that these leadership participants participate in. We actually will be showing that on our channel. Right. Um, and he actually put together a piece for us. Okay. He gives highlights see for that. the 2024 Leadership Academy in RPV. Excellent. Let's check it out. RPV Leadership Academy is a five-week program that focuses on building new leaders in our community. Some people who attend are already leaders in nonprofit organizations or in their business world or in their um, personal families, but this is an opportunity for the, us to expose them to the city and create new leaders. In some ways, it's an education tool as well as a recruitment tool. So. The hope is that the residents will come out of this learning something new, meeting their neighbors, and look for ways to be of service to their community. The main message tonight is just to encourage people to come out and participate in civics. Uh, it can seem daunting, it can seem you know eclectic, but the reality is that it's a great experience. You come out, you learn about your city, you learn about how government works. I'm very involved with the Seaview Residents Association. I'm on the board, and uh, so I figured, well, I better learn about the city. I'm understanding, I'm interacting with city people. I'm an urban studies major, and I want to work somewhere in the city government. This might be a good opportunity to learn the ropes before I actually get into like a, a job in city government. Really great to have the history of the city because when you have the history behind it, you start to understand how it all fits together and what the goals of the city are and how we've gotten to where we are today. Being part of the Leadership Academy for, for the past five weeks is that Ken Dida, one of the original founders, was here, but also to tell the story himself and I'm so, uh, I'm so moved by the impact that volunteers have made in our, our community. I was very surprised about how humble everyone was. The city councilman, the chairmen of every committee and women. It was very just surprising to see where they came from, how they worked their way up, and then just also interesting to see how the cities ran. I decided to join the Leadership Academy because I wanted to learn more about the city that I live in and understand how I could give back to this great city. One of the things that impressed me the most about the program was just the diversity of talent that spoke to us, understanding the city history, understanding the long-term planning, what it is day to day that our city council members and all of our great staff really do to make this the best place to live. Rancho's Palos Verdes has such a great history that's rich in, you know, culture and the passion of the people of preserving, um, you know, the beautiful views, the wonderful neighborhood, and I just hope that, you know, as I become more involved in the city, I, you know, maintain those goals and that vision that our founders had. Hi, I'm Ara Moranian, Rancho Palos Verdes City Manager. 
The Leadership Academy happens once a year. It's an opportunity for residents to join and come and learn about their local government, their city, find out the facts about their city, find out how their city operates and functions, the different departments within the organization, the services we provide, how we provide those services, how we pay for those services. That's what the Leadership Academy is all about. It is through the Leadership Academy that we hope that we could find the future leaders of Rancho Palos Verdes. And a big thanks to all of the volunteers who participate in that program. It's amazing and you learn so much about the city. You really do. And in fact, Maria, the hope is, and it's happened, that some of the participants um, in the program will apply to be on in position on positions on committees and commissions. Right. Our city's been recruiting. Um, there were seats on every committee and commission available and some of the participants did apply. So congratulations and uh, we appreciate all they're doing. Absolutely. And in fact, they were recognized by the city council um, for doing this certification program and so Next year, if you want to join up, yes. sign up. Sign up watch, early. Um, the city's website, rpvca.gov, they'll post it when it's ready for 2025. Absolutely. Now, one of our favorite places on the Hill, believe it or not, is the Palos Verdes Library District. That library, we always talk about it, they have a great gift shop. The book sale, I've never seen anything like it in my life. I cannot walk away without a book. I yes. mean, there's just no, it's not possible to leave there without a book. Palos Verdes Library District is amazing. It's amazing. And at the main library, at the Peninsula Library, mm -hmm. every month now they do have been doing free events that really celebrate so many things. Back in May it was um, Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Right. Um, so I spent a few hours there on a Saturday afternoon mm -hmm. and uh, learning more about Asian culture. There were students from the Chinese class at PB High. Just all celebrating, and I'm going to say Chinese drum roll, please. Hi, my name is Merlin David. I'm the executive director for the Peninsula Friends of the Library. Thank you so much for joining us here today. We are celebrating our similarities, and this is, uh, we're celebrating our Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and we've got an amazing program of local musicians and authors and judges and people who are just coming out here to celebrate some wonderful food. We celebrate ABCD FM, which is art, books, clothing, dance, food, and music. And we are here to uh, just enjoy it. It's a standing room only crowd out there. I've got to get back in there, but we are so thankful for our PPTV for just coming out here and just being a part of the celebration. We're from PV High and We've been playing the drums since the beginning of the semester, since the beginning of the year, because we also do other events, like we played at the Botanical Gardens and a lot of other cultural events just for the community to be a part of and to see, and it's helping us learn a lot more about the culture. The drummings are like um, like a wartime thing in China. Uh, I guess it's intimidating, it's really cool. I think that there's a lot of, there's like a big Chinese and like Asian population here. We learn a lot about the culture. We have, like, uh, we celebrate festivals and different uh, different holidays in China, like Chinese New Year's and Fall Festival. It's, it's all really important. Come on out to the pvldfriends.org, pvldfriends.org slash give, G-I-V-E. I would be remiss if I didn't say that, but thank you so much for uh, it, coming out here and enjoying and being a part of our community. Come out to the library. Come out to the community room. We have an event every month, a culture event. Next uh, month, uh, June 11, come out to celebrate Pride Month. Thank you. Executive Director of Peninsula Friends of the Library, Merlin David. He has so much enthusiasm. He does. His energy is just infectious. 
and he does such great work to keep the community coming to the library, supporting mm -hmm. the library. You know, the Friends of the Library does so much. They can, do. You know, they help support all that happens with our library district. So check them out, you know, online. It's amazing. And all that, that did you have a stuff. library like that when you were growing up? I had an amazing library. Oh, we yes. didn't. We didn't have a library like that. Yeah, I no. mean, I expect there to be a coffee bar in that place soon. Oh, yeah. I think they have a popcorn machine in the youth center. Yeah, it's really, it's really amazing. It's, there's it's something so for everything cool. at yeah. our, in our library district. It really is awesome. Well, Liz, um, school's almost out. I guess school is out now because it's June, and that's another interesting thing. School. When I was in school, everybody got out right at the same time, but now it's kind of like some people get out in May, some people get out in June, but yes, yes. needless to say, school is out, summer is here, and I know that you had an opportunity last month to do a story about some of the teachers that amazing teachers here on the hill but some right. very special teachers um, in may they always have mm -hmm. teacher appreciation week it's yes. across the country to celebrate all of what our teachers do they're amazing yes um there's so many incredible teachers right mm -hmm. here on the peninsula by the way i want to ask you who's your favorite teacher do you, you know, have a favorite teacher i think i did because when i was in grade school i had my third grade teacher mrs mooney was like so nice so pretty but my fourth grade teacher mrs ernest she was almost i thought she was a little scary but i learned more from her than probably anybody because she really challenged us and I learned how to write poetry and well my mom taught me that as well but I just remember really being challenged in the fourth grade by her so even though at first it was a little bit like you know she's not going to be as nice but she was very challenging so I always remembered her so thank you Mrs. Ernest. Yes go fourth grade teachers and yes you're going to stay tuned because we're going to showcase a very special fourth grade teacher. You're going to tell um, us more yeah, about so her. Yes I'm going to tell you about mm -hmm. this so yeah that teacher's name is Star Nagdev. Star is one of the two teachers that received an award. Mm -hmm. The other teacher, his name was Jeff, he teaches over at Dodson Middle School. They participated in a photo contest. Okay. Um, the South Bay City's Council of Government is an organization that we've showcased a lot here oh, yeah. on, our, on Studio RPV. That, that, that organization does so much for quality of life issues, including mm -hmm. they focus on the environment. So every year they have a photo contest um, to depict sustainability or the environment, things like that. And these two teachers were both winners. Wow. Um, and <clears throat> Star is a fourth grade teacher, like I said, at Silver Spur. And then Jeff, he's a horticultural teacher. And we have their photos, we're sharing them now. Yes. Picture of them winning Amazing. their award. And the, the teach, the Jeff who took his picture with the kids, they all have their hands yes. holding radishes. Right. He taught them about gardening. And um, they planted the, the radishes from seeds. Mm -hmm. And then Star has a teach that Star over at Silversburg, her photo is depicting her students that all came together to be part of a project that's focused on cleaning up the oceans. Mm -hmm. Right. So absolutely. we're gonna learn more about that because we visited Silversburg Elementary, met those kids in the photo, met Star, and also one more teacher, Maria. Yes. This teacher's name is Gail Warner, and 30 years ago at Silver Spur, she started a community garden for the students, mm -hmm. and it's still growing, and she's there now substituting because she retired, and so we caught up with Gail and Star, who are continuing to help our students grow. Let's check them out. Well, thank you for being here. I'm in my favorite place. Uh, 1995, well, that's some time ago. Originally, this was just open land and teaching fourth grade and California history, we learned how to claim land. And so that's what my class did, and uh, everything kind of went from there. And, and they decided that they're a very hungry group of kids, and maybe we should put in some vegetables or fruit trees or whatever we could. So we came right out here to this first plot. There's four plots to the Silversburg Garden, and I must say with the name, it was originally Room 19 or the Silver Spur Garden. And then it became known as the Healing Garden. So this garden is all about helping people and getting the students involved. Gail has always had a focus on how can we use the garden to help people in need. We've done lots of fundraisers with calendars and selling food from here. But also if we have lost someone, it's also a place, a memorial ground, so we can uh, have a special plant, a rose garden, to remember people from the past. One of the special things about Silver Spur is we're such a community school and having Mrs. Warner, who is a former teacher here, her grandkids go to school here um, and she's just, she's more than a substitute. She comes on the weekends. Um, she also gets kids excited about the garden um, and helps out. Uh, she goes above and beyond and so we're so lucky to have her. Um, and she's just a special, special part of this community. Here we are, we're in the garden that your mom started, but you also worked it. Tell us about that. 
Absolutely. I have three brothers. We're, I'm a triplet. And then we have an older brother that's two years older. And all of us were in high school when this garden started. So we definitely, labor of love, helped her haul the dirt up here. <laughs> It is very exciting because I literally saw this as a teenager and now I am a teacher teaching in my old kindergarten classroom here. Very exciting. But I've seen the amount of children come through this garden and how important it is. It's a safe place for them. I love the garden so much. Uh, it's just a uh, quiet place to come and sit and Miss Warner has really made this place special. Uh, she put so much hard work into it. She's always out here. Thank you, Miss Warner. Hi, I'm Star Knock Dave, and I am the Sustainability Chair for PVP USD Sustainability Committee. And I've got here with me some of our student council and some of our green team. And we're really excited and jazzed because we were recognized by the South Bay City Councils of Governments uh, for a photo contest. In our winning photo, students were down at Malaga Cove and we were collecting waste. But the really cool impact of it is that we can categorize this waste and identify what is typically left down at our coastline. And from that, we can come up with a project. So it really plays into the next generation of science standards, um, hands-on learning. Um, ideas generate projects around that that they can help with our community and make a difference and help ensure that we keep waste out of our coastline. We picked a great time to come. It's Teacher Appreciation Week, so while we celebrate all of our teachers, um, we could not be more thrilled to have Mrs. Nogdave, who is just an absolute pillar for the community and sustainability um, and getting kids excited about it, which I think is the most important thing. Um, she's the leader of our student council and our green team, and she really has done so much, not just for our school, but for the district as a whole, and really from recycling to um, promoting scratch foods in the kitchen. Um, she just really gets everybody excited and on board about it and we're so blessed to have her here. Here I like to um, put my organic waste in the green bin that we have here and that's how I help the environment. So at home I help by um, throwing away food scraps in our sink trash so it goes into the land into the organic waste so we can compost it. I like to recycle all the things that I can. I never realized how much how much we threw away and put into the landfills until just a few weeks ago when I talked to our wonderful teacher Miss Nogdave and ever since I've tried everything I could to make to make sure we recycle and do as many things to help the environment as we can. I like using the new green barrel we have for um organic waste scraps. We used to throw away all our food that we didn't eat, but now we're um saving the earth by um putting it in our in our organic waste. Each week, um, my mom and me and I go to the beach and we pick up as much um, things as we can. You are in the award-winning photo. Tell me about that day in the picture. We collected trash with Winona, Rex, and Jacob there. And we were dividing them into groups like of trash. I love being on the green team because, well... It lets you feel more connected to nature than regular people. So, and it's more peace, peaceful here. And if sometimes the green team doesn't know, like, they don't know what kind of tree this is. So then, like, there's always Miss Warner's always out here. So like, you can just go up to her and ask her, what kind of tree is this? What what plant is this? And she'll tell you. Even though she's getting a bit older, she still comes here almost every single day, works on the garden, and does an amazing job keeping sure all the plants, trees and everything is healthy, and the water is soiled, and everything is going good. Um, I love to smell the mint in the garden, and I also love to look at the plants grow, like there's an apple tree, and I like to look at the plants grow. I retired in 2008, and I guess you can spell the word retirement, but it's not part of my vocabulary or who I am. I've really never stopped working. I've been at Silver Spur for close to 39 years. There's a third generation that's at Silver Spur now, part of my family. There's so many wonderful stories that I tell the classes. It's a wonderful place even today for kids to come out during their lunch recess and just sit and do homework or talk, communicate. The whole purpose of the garden really, truly, originally was to bring kids together. You know, Liz, that school is really so amazing. And I remember doing a story there several years ago about that garden because 
you really learn so much about growing and how quickly different vegetables grow. So I, right. I, I was all into it. Yeah, it I know when the garden had started that 30 years ago, um, it actually started with a program called Five a Day. Um, it's a grant program the state offered to get people to encourage kids to like grow fruits and vegetables and eat five wow. a day. And um, But over time now, they're not doing the fruits and vegetables anymore. It's become more about native plants nice. and all of that. But again, encouraging the, the idea of um, you know, growing and nurturing their soil and well, all that stuff. And I think it's amazing to actually see something grow for the first time. I remember yeah. when I was small, uh, my dad had a, a, a big vegetable garden, but pumpkins grow super fast. Right. And so <laughs> I was always waiting for them to, you know, like, when are we gonna see this? When are we gonna see that? And it's like, well, it takes time. But pumpkins grow like super, super fast. So yes, it I was know. Like my, my grandparents had an amazing that. garden as mm -hmm. well. So it's wonderful. Um, it's a great thing for kids. Yeah. So that was it was great to be back at Silver Spur. And yes. like like the teacher said, if you want to go see the garden, we'll give you a tour. Oh, that's so nice. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's so awesome. Well, Liz, it was Kids to Parks Day last month, and we have so many amazing parks here in Rancho Palos Verdes. Do you have a favorite park here? When you ask that, well, now I have to say with the Ladera Linda Community Park yes, so has nice. just been renovated. Mm -hmm. It was a, it is unbelievable to go over there and just take in the panoramic view, and it's very zen. Yes, and that's also in my neighborhood, so it's close by. I can't. I'd say that every RP every park, park is so is nice. Special, yes, but it has something amazing to offer. And of course, Kids to Parks Day this year mm -hmm. um, was held at Hess Park. Yes. So uh, let's go over because it's fun for everyone of all ages. We're here at Hess Park for Kids to Parks Day 2024. Uh, Kids to Parks Day is a nationally recognized day of outdoor play where we encourage kids and their families to come out to their local park. So today the Recreation and Parks Department has some crafts going on and activities. We're planting succulents behind me here, painting pots. Uh, we've got some local organizations, the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy is here, and Raptor Events will be doing a demonstration with hawks and owls a little later on this morning. Uh, our Open Space Management is here doing some education and handing out some information and it's a really great day uh, to bring the kids and the families out to uh, their local local park here at Hess Park. Then we'll land on top of the cactus and look out. <laughs> People love Kids to Parks Day. Uh, it's a really easy event to come to. Uh, it's very casual. Um, they love working one-on-one -on -one with the staff, with our Recreation and Parks staff, um, taking home a fun craft that they can watch grow, um, and getting information from our local groups and, uh, like I said, our Recreation and Parks Department, Open Space Management, and of course seeing the, uh, the birds um, and reptiles. Kids to Parks Day, it's um, sponsored by the National Park Trust. Uh, it's held the third Saturday of every May. This is its 14th year, and it's a nationally recognized event, and parks all over the country hold events just like this to encourage kids and families uh, and everyone in the neighborhood to come out and enjoy uh, their local parks. And Liz, those parks are going to be busier than ever this summer, especially the Kendida Civic Center Park, because we'll have 4th of July starting to kick it off. And that's always so much fun. So much fun over the Huge. 4th of July celebration. Mm -hmm. It's really when the community comes together and celebrates their patriotism, but just yes. it's all about fun. And so the much second fun. annual drone, drone show, show right? Yes. Tell us about that. You were there last year. They it was amazing. They're gonna have more light this year. It's gonna be even more spectacular. Yeah, here's what's really fun, is you come to the Candida Civic Center, you can come early, there's food trucks, you can shop, you can watch a pie eating contest, which is always fun. There's always so much to do, and there's things for the kids to do, mm -hmm. so it's a blast. And then you can just enjoy the beautiful day on the grass, bring a lawn chair, whatever, um, and then, Dusk happens, and the drone show appears, and it was so spectacular last year. In fact, it was packed full of people. Some people had come back, and we looked around, and the entire Candida Civic Center lawn was just packed full of people. So come early, enjoy the day with us. We'll be there, and it's just always a blast. It's where it's happening, Candida Civic Center, really all summer long, because yes. we have concerts in the park and right. movies in the park. We yes. want to share some yeah. dates. Of course, go on the city mm -hmm. website to find out about all of these events. Yes, the movies kick off, actually, June 15th kicks off with uh, Migration, and then July 13th, Little Rascals, and August 10th, Panda 4. And then, of course, there's fun, fun concerts coming yes. up. And concerts as well, July 27th and August 24th. And those are going to be a surprise, but I have to tell you that everybody's asking for those 80s bands to come back. So we you never love know. it. We are we rocking love here the 80s. in RP. We are. And we love to have a good time. Liz, always so much to do here, so much going on. So come out and join the fun with us. I know RPV Absolutely. is where it's happening. We know how to have a great time here. 
So with that, we're going to wrap up. I'm Liz Brown Swanson with Studio RPV. I'm Maria Sorrell, and we'll see you at the park. <laughs>